National retail chains don't have a lot of time to do local research when it comes to locksmithing or any other maintenance needs. That's why they have national service providers to find the resources closest to their store locations. Eventually, these NSPs call our phones asking us if we are available to do the work needed. But what's it like to work in N for an NSP directly? What profit can you make? What's it like to be an actual NSP? I'm Jeff Moss, and along with Tim Coleman and Tyler J. Thomas, we'll try to make some sense of it all and not run over your NTE. This is The Three Tumblers. So, as many people know, uh, before being an actual locksmith, something that I doubt every once in a while, uh, I worked in IT for a national service provider, and I wasn't directly involved in the industry per se, but... You know, when you work around a call center and you you see and hear a lot of the goings on and how it really works, um, it, it's, you know, not really different than any other trade. You know, they want to be able to call one company when anything security related breaks. And basically the NSP does the legwork. They are always looking for technicians in their areas, looking for companies that can do what they need. Yes, sometimes it can be a pain in the butt to work for them. You have to remember that they are, you know, dealing with these big companies, so you don't have to, basically. Um, and they're dealing with their loss prevention and security and facilities and things like that. So there is a lot involved. And that is sometimes why there's a lot of paperwork, because they have to jump through a lot of hoops to get paid so they can pay you. It's not always just so they can be difficult. And I'm being very generic here. Um, you know, not to give anything away from anybody that I, it's, you know, there's a lot of moving parts. So, you know, somebody has to sell the accounts in the first place. Somebody has to get them interested in using you, you know, you have to be in, in, you have to have licensing and compliance in every state, every place you do work. You know, if you're monitoring an alarm somewhere and you're not registered the, and the police come out, there could be problems, you know, building permits, things like that for new stores. There is a lot involved, you know. So, yeah, we may just go out there and do a rekey or swap out some hardware, but there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes. Um, so I certainly did pick up on some of that stuff. And, you know, now that I work in in a shop that does some NSP work, but not a lot, you know. I don't deal with them directly, but I answer the phone calls and, you know, it's the same stuff. I hear the same stuff that our people would be asking when I worked at the other place, you know, is the job complete? How much time did it take? What parts do you need? You know, there, there's always going to be those issues of getting the wrong parts or things not arriving on time, or, you know, can't we just put our own parts in and which we really don't do. Most of the companies send the stuff out. We don't do a lot of replenishment. You know, but I see that there are also companies that we do work for, you know, prop on the property management side where, you know, they do all that type of work for the facilities, same sort of thing. It's not just focused in retail. So they come to us for their lock stuff. They might go somewhere else for their plumbing parts or their, you know, sometimes we go out and do stuff. So there, there's different angles that you can, uh, I guess, attack it from. And it, it, can be a hassle. I would say that if you have plenty of established work, you don't necessarily have to bust your tumblers to, you know, get paid in 90 days, you know, if you don't have to, but some people when they're starting, you know, it's like lockouts and after hours stuff, you're going to take whatever comes in um, until you don't have to. So what are your guys thoughts? I know I sort of blended both of my points together, but that's fine. Let, let me ask you a question real quick. Um, I, I, we've we've known each other forever. Let me. I just never asked this before. Uh, your previous previous employer, when you were applying for that job or whatever, was it to combine both of your hobbies, or was it just coincidence? No, I saw a job that they needed an IT person, and I thought, oh, maybe I, you know, hey, I'm doing IT right now, and this is an industry that I'm really interested in. Maybe I can learn more about it, and that didn't happen. That wasn't their goal. That may have been, that was what I was hoping for. Okay. So I, I guess like when we get a call from an NSP, 
It's like, hey, are you available to go out and do this, um, you know, within this time period? And when we say yes, you know, okay, we can. Um, I guess kind of when you're when you are the NSP, and we'll probably touch on this a little bit when it gets to Tyler's block, but you know, Jeff, when when you were in your position, were you calling other people to say, hey, can you go and do this? Or were you the one who was called to uh, go and do whatever was needed? No, I was the IT guy. I had nothing to do with it. But we we were running the systems and making sure that they that the phones rang and that the computers worked. So, no, I like I said, it was not wasn't in the calls. I was not a. I had nothing to, I was, it was very clear that, yeah, I was an IT guy. So, so, so you made sure that the, uh, the NSB's phones connected to who they were supposed to connect to. In other words, phones, computers, everything, all, anything that, you know, a computer guy does, it just happened to be at something in the industry that I really like. So, gotcha. So, so when, when a uh, locksmith in the field would call in to check in on a job, you were the one who made sure that all of the technology lined up to connect that locksmith in the field to the representative in the NSP office, right? Exactly. Gotcha. Yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. Uh, well, stay tuned. Tim will have some advice about making money for NSP work. When you get a work order from a national, regional, or even local service provider, it usually comes with a not to exceed amount, but this doesn't always have to be the amount of money you walk away with. Communicating with the NSP from the start in regards to time, distance, and work provided is essential. In other words, before you accept the job, tell them how much you charge to go that far, and how much it will be for you to evaluate the situation. Once you're there, tell them how much it will cost for you to fix the problem and always provide a minimum cost for your time and materials up front. So we do a a lot of work for national, regional, and local service providers, whether it's uh, you know, for banks or for local property management companies. And they will give us an NTE, not to exceed, uh, on every work order. And is kind of our policy to run up to that NTE just for the initial visit. And when we get there, we call and we say, hey, this is what we found this is what we think is the problem and this is how much we think it will cost to fix it. So, you know, right up front, you can mitigate your uh, expenses for some of these, these jobs. And, you know, it is just like, I don't know, you, you should say, you know, okay, I'm here, I'm on the job. This is how much it costs me to get here. This is what I see when I am here. And this is how much I think it's going to cost. So, uh, Jeff, I know you're not normally out in the field, but what do you think about that? Like, uh, you know, when somebody calls you and says, hey, can you go and check this out? If you were to go out in the field and and look at something, I mean, you want to at least meet their uh, NTE, right? And then give them a, an honest estimate about how much it will cost. Yeah, I mean, when somebody comes in, you know, my door doesn't open, blah, what's it going to cost for you to come out there? We tell them between one, you know. Between 125 and 150, that covers a service call and a half hour labor. So 
generally that's what it's going to cost. It rarely would be less unless we go out there, there's nothing they can do, or if it's, you know, customer education or there are some, yeah, there are some cases on a job where we would just charge a service call, but I don't think for an NSP, you know, because you got to jump through a lot of hoops to get paid and it takes a while. So. Right. Tyler, like when you were doing uh, field calls, out you know out on the road and you would take a a job for an nsp um and they were to say hey you're you're not to exceed 120 dollars on this job uh did that pretty much just cover your service call or did that cover a service call in diagnosis or or what I think it covered a service call on like an initial diagnosis. Uh, but when it was below that, or I don't remember the specifics, but yeah, it was like we told them up front, hey, this is going to get me there. This is going to let me look at it. I'll call you back when I figure out what's wrong and, and adjust the NT. It seemed like uh, when I was doing work, I, well, I'll just tell you up front, I, I worked locksmiths for a few years. It, it, it seemed like the NTEs were low enough to get you there initially. And you would take a look at it, and it seemed like after that initial diagnosis, you were calling them back every job to say, uh, I need it bumped up to this, or this is what it's going to take. So initially, they would get you out there, what the NTE was, but almost certainly once you got out there and saw what it was going to be, if it didn't require parts that you didn't have that they had to supply, you were telling them, hey, uh, this is what it's going to take. we got to bump this NTE up, and then they would say, oh, yeah, it's proved or not. I never, well, now I take that back. I never had an NTE disapproved, but you still had to all always call up and say, Hey, I need an additional or an increase to the NTE. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've actually had an NTE, uh, like disapproved, as you said. Um, and it was for parts or key blanks or whatever. And they said, Hey, we're not going to pay your prices, uh, to supply or or for you to supply those key blanks to our customer and yeah i mean once you get out there you should evaluate it and give an estimate at least and say hey this is what i think this is going to cost and that that's kind of to my second point is you need to get out there and evaluate what's going on and then be able to tell your NSP, say, hey, this is what's required, and this is what needs to be ordered, and this is about how much it's going to cost you. You know, I've I've done that with several service providers and said, this is what we need, and they've said, okay, we will order the parts and ship them to you. So, I mean, Tyler, what... Is that something kind of like you would do or like, how would you handle that if you were on the, the field side of it, not the uh, service provider side of it? No, oh, I was hoping to answer the service provider side of it. I will answer it the service provider way. Uh, I want to get jobs cleared out as quick as possible. I recognize that sometimes, especially with us, Medico restricted keyways, that stuff has to come from us, but if somebody like you or if I were to call Jeff's company or Jim Bob Cooter's company in Kentucky, if they're saying, oh, it just needs a, you know, a new grade two lever set or a new simplex. Do you have it in stock? Yes. Do you have it on your truck? Yes. All right. Just do it. Let's get it done. Um, I have a, a amount that I charge on every invoice, just what we call an administrative fee. Uh, I'm more than happy to pay that and get the job done right away as opposed to milking every little bit of money out of the job. Uh, you know, you sell me a simplex for $671. I'm paying $324. Yes, I'd like to make that markup, but if I can knock it out, I'm not going to, I'm not going to undercut you. You've got to make money as well. So from the service providers aspect, at least my aspect, I'd rather the job be done right away. Now, if I'm, the field service tech, yes, I want to increase my margins. I want to get more money out of it. And I'll reach out and say, hey, look, um, I've got what it takes to finish this job right now. Is that approved? 
Tyler, yes, security engineering, yes, approve it, do it right away. Not everybody's like that, but um, I can see both sides of the argument. Uh, personally, I would think that if the technician, whoever it may be, whoever the NSP may be, if the equipment is available on hand, ready to be installed, knock it out, be done with it. But that's just me. Gotcha. So, so in other words, if uh, if you're hiring out people, you would rather have it done right now. Yeah, because um, your clock is faster than mine. I can all uh, well, my terms with them are net thirty. So, you turn it into me right then and there. Basically, I'm only delayed by a few hours or whatever it takes for you to get the invoice to me. When we start having material delays, times I have to order parts, now we're tacking on what I have to pay, whoever I'm buying it from, distribution, direct from the manufacturer, whatnot. I want to get it done as quick as possible. So if you've got it on hand, yes, my profit margins are smaller, but I know that you're going to bill me that day. I'm going to bill the customer that day. So we're going to be in line as far as net 30, whatever it may be. Uh, yeah, the quicker I can get it out, the better. Gotcha. And look, I, I, I'm going to make money on the implementation because we're restricted keyways. So selling new branches, new systems, new states, whatever, I'm going to make my money there. And on the residuals, I'm not, I, I'm not concerned with delaying anything. I want to get it done right away. And if sometimes I'll come ahead, sometimes you'll come ahead, whatever it may be. I don't care. I'm still going to make money. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Jeff, what, I, I mean, fill in here. Like uh, when you're doing NSP work, what do you feel as far as contacting the NSP and being able to do what you need to do? I mean, it doesn't really affect me. So, but I would think that it would be best to, if you can get it done in one day, just get it done and then figure out sending the replenished parts later. If so, if we have it on our truck and there's nothing different and it doesn't require any keying or, you know, a lot of the stuff we do, it's got to be keyed by the NSP and then they send it to us to install. So, you know, that's the part that usually takes time, but they send it on their dime. So it's not typically an issue. I mean, if I was the one doing the work, I wouldn't want to have to make multiple trips, just get it done send me back the parts you know, or send, send me the parts gotcha. in so, an expedient manner so that I can use it for another job. So, so you would rather the NSP send you parts as opposed to you using parts out of your stock or you ordering parts, right? No, that's not what I said. I, I said okay. If it's something that needs to be done today or in the next day or two, and I have the parts, I would, I would use them and let them set, replenish it. Get the job done, get it built, because you know it's going to take time to get to get everything done. So just do it. Gotcha. I don't I don't like the replenishment aspect of it. And I've done it with a few people that are friends and all of that, but it's easier. Well, at least my software, my accounting software tells me what dollars and cents are owed to me. So I would just much rather pay attention to what's owed to me in terms of money. As opposed to, hey, you owe me a MLX eighty two or three of them or whatever. I mean, mm -hmm. I, it's it's burned me in the past, and I should follow up with a few people, but I, I would just rather you charge me for it, and I'll I'll pay you for it, or vice versa. Um, it I don't know. It's just a pain in the ass to keep up with who's owed to what beyond dollars and cents. But that's me. Yeah, I don't disagree on that, but I mean, systems typically. It's not a huge deal. I don't know. You just say, hey, we owe them a part, but you are, you know, ESC for dispatching or whatever. You can put notes in there till the cows come home. If an NSP who is a locksmith and not just a maintenance uh, service provider contacts us, then we can say, hey, you provide these cylinders. Like, for instance, we do a lot of work for one NSP who has a regional and or national contract for a big box store, and they have a particular electromechanical log cylinder for these stores. Um, obviously, we can't order those parts, so we have to turn around and say, hey, 
ship those parts to the store and if we're available we will come out and install that um other nsps they're like okay how much would you charge us for these parts and they will turn around and look in their catalog and say oh for you know a dcel 2000 you know door closer you're going to charge me i don't know what 300 bucks or whatever for it um yeah i can ship one to you for 85 my cost and then just pay you labor to put it in but i mean so you kind of you kind of have to balance what the nsp is willing to pay you versus what you are worth i guess is kind of the uh the end of my points you guys have anything to add to that that's the um that's the proverbial boulder up the hill that we all have to deal with. All right. Well, you know, I really get annoyed with those NSP folks sometimes. Speaking of, Tyler is going to tell us about being an actual NSP locksmith. So don't change that dial. When you land a gig that pretty much guarantees you regular income and you have the capability to fulfill that request, it could potentially lead to a pretty decent amount of money in your pocket. But what is it actually like trying to coordinate other shops to do what your work is for you? Well, that's me. I'm Tyler. Hey, y'all. Uh, our company, Security Engineering uh, in Atlanta, we've, we've got a few national accounts that span about 10 states now. Um, we, we've got, well, we've got 205 subcontractors we use. Tim's company, uh, is number 205 and, uh, well, tell them what they won. I don't know. I don't know, but, uh, uh Josh Sands, his company is number 200, which I joke is his weight because he's a big boy, but he's losing weight. So good for him. Uh, but yeah, we, we do a lot of work. We do a lot of work around the Southeast, um, I'll just be frank with you. What I've what I've learned, I can understand gripes from both sides of the equation, both sides of the aisle. Uh, number one, landing contracts, getting the jobs in the first place. Well, we just had it thrust upon us. We we had two contracts with banks that we did pretty good in Georgia. They just been adding states since then. Um, what we found is that if you provide valuable customer service, they'll just keep adding work to you. And the way you can do that is through valuable service providers, what we call contractors, what they call vendors, whatever it may be. Companies like Tim's, where I send a work order out, I'm not going to dictate, I'm not going to fuss about what things cost. I'm just going to send you the work order. You get it done in a timely manner, hopefully a professional manner to where we're not getting callbacks and such. And you know, you just do that year over year, month over month, whatever it may be. Shit just keeps pouring in. Tim, we've been doing a lot of work lately in Charlotte, um, Charlotte, South Carolina, of course. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what kind of noise was that? Um, you know, we're not like a ter- a typical uh, NSP. Number one, we don't require pictures. We don't require an NTE. We just say, go get it done. How, how refreshing is that for you? It's fucking awesome. Um, because we also do NSP work for somebody else who is literally like a mile or three up the road from you. And, uh, they require us to call and check in and update with progress and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, anyway, and also like if, They send us to a customer who just needs duplicates of keys. When we call them and say, hey, they're going to need, you know, 16 of these and and five of those and and 12 of these, they're like, oh, well, we're going to send you the blanks instead of you selling us those. Um, You know, no, you you guys don't do that. And it's just like, hey, go get it done send us the invoice and we'll pay it. And that's so, so freaking awesome. 
I mean, awesome. Uh, really is is just so awesome to be able to do that. I, I don't know if that's. Uh, I I imagine it, it it it's kind of the middle ground between the NSPs and the customers. I think both sides dictate the requirements. Um, we had an account that we had in multiple states that we just told them to go kick rocks because they went with. Well, I'll be honest, they went with Jones Lang LaSalle's. Cora Grove shit and it's just just a nightmare and they can have at it uh you don't have to bleep this out Tim I don't give a shit but the requirements were so out of out of base out of touch and I was just like I'm not going to require any of our guys to deal with this and uh, I'm certainly not going to Jeff Jeff listen acquiesce with it so I, I I just told him to go kick rocks but this other customer that we have that's in 10 states they're not like that uh they 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 have a pretty loose NTE, and when it gets to that point, we know it, and so do all of our subcontractors because it gets pretty hefty, and they're like, oh, you need a quote? Yeah, we need a quote. We'll send it to them. So I, I, I see both sides. I see, well, especially with this Corgo shit where they're saying, uh, I need pictures, I need quotes before we do any work, and blah, 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 all this red tape bureaucracy bullshit, and I'm just like, no, I'm not going to fucking deal with it. You know, you're only paying me. I mean, with this one customer, uh, I think we only made 30000 last year in profit. Well, not profit, just revenue. And I was like, well, it's not fucking worth the headache. But this other one, they don't do that. They trust us. They they give us the benefit of the doubt. And I'm like, well, fuck, I'll go to bat with them any day of the week. So I I, I can see, you know, uh, certain NSPs saying you need pictures. I need before and after pictures. I need quotes. I need calls for NTEs. You need, you know, require parts, whatever. I can see it both ways. But um, having been in the driver's seat between, or at least being the middleman, um, yeah, I, I, I can see it both ways. But uh, I tend to favor the locksmiths in this equation, having been one or still being one. Uh, but uh, locksmiths out there, if you hear this shit, they're not the NSPs aren't it's not arbitrary. It's not just to be a dick. There are means, methods, and modes behind it. Tim, what were you gonna say? Yeah, I mean, I I honestly I would like to say that you were my favorite NSP to work for. Uh and that's not just because we do the <clears throat> podcast and we drink and and all that other shit together, but uh no, it's because I you don't even really care that I tell you that I'm on site. I mean, our system tells you that, you know, I'm in route to a job or I'm on site of a job, or this is the date and time that I have a job scheduled to do for you. Um, I get a text message. It's, it's amazing, actually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that it is pretty cool. Uh, but, you know, and then you get messages from me personally from my personal number but when i get there i don't feel like i'm under a certain scrutiny like i am with other nsps in other words some nsps you know want me to take a picture of the front of the building to say hey here i am and go in and do this and take a picture of a, a lever or a mortise cylinder or whatever before I rekit and then take a picture of the same damn cylinder after I rekit. You know, you you're just like, hey, go rekey the fucking cylinder. Yeah, get get the job done. Customer satisfied, or at least the people on site are, and they respond back to the property manager or whatnot and say, Yeah, the job's done. Go ahead and approve the invoice. I'm like, fuck yeah, let's do it. Jeff, what say you? No, I, I just know that dealing with Service Channel and all those other platforms is a pain in the you know what. Yeah, now I'm at, now imagine being uh, invoicing or doing the invoicing for a shop, having to go through the hoops, go through their web portal, their channel. Well, I know, I hear about it all the time for our from our office lady. It's a it's a pain in the ass, is it not? Yes. There's mm -hmm. there's one NSP that we do work for, and they actually have a uh, service provider app. And the last time that I used it, you could use that app to take and upload pictures of everything um, and designate them as before and after. And we 
actually that invoice we have not heard anything from normally every other single invoice that we upload and email everything to them for we get requests and repeat requests for the same thing uh but their app actually really works i was gonna say a lot of, a lot of times those don't even work but if you got them to work cool i've heard of a lot of them where they just don't use the app you have to call and it never worked for like four years so maybe it changed i i think what it is is that these people are born as far as corporate worlds corporate environments and they think oh this and that and the other is going to work because we've been taught that or told that and then when you get out no matter if it's a locksmith a plumber electrician just shit falls apart and it's not going to work according to the plan Finding locksmiths, let's talk about that for a second. Um, like I said, we've got 205. Uh, the number one requirement is that up until recently, they've been an Aloha member, but more so recently, I've just been networking with people that I know that aren't necessarily Aloha members. Again, I, the bond between somebody you know versus somebody that's just affiliated is a little bit stronger. Uh, I like to work with people that I know uh, and and vice versa. Uh do a lot of work uh, with other locksmiths. Um, Chris Huss Settler out in Spokane, Washington. Wayne Witten out in Colorado. I uh, got some quotes in uh, Augusta, Georgia the other day. Want some X Force work done. Things like that. Warner Robbins, Georgia. And Pat Philholm, good guy. Um, I like to reciprocate that as well. Uh, oh, well, I give you a good example. Tim's company. We did some work for them before we started sending them work. So I, I like that kind of shit as far as it's not necessarily, hey, you're a member of Aloha, let me give you work. Now, I, I'd rather prefer I know you and I'm doing work with you beforehand. And uh, let's make two work beforehand. Uh, Tim, it's turned out all right, huh? Yeah. I mean, you uh, you helped us out a while back with some uh, parts that we needed uh, before you started sending us work for one of your uh, customers and it it really has worked out. I mean, um, doing the Reiki jobs and everything and, and going out to see what's wrong and stuff. I mean, we're used to it because we, <laughs> we actually do that same kind of work with one of your uh, quote unquote competitors who's just up the road from you. But we, uh, we like dealing with you because you pay us on time. Let, uh, I want to bring up another point too. Is is that we're kind of our company at least is getting away from it, or I'm getting away from functioning as an NSP. And I know that there's a lot of uh, people that say, "Oh, they don't pay on time." You got to realize too that they're floating a lot of money. Uh, at one point last year, I was floating. Uh, I had sixty seven thousand dollars that was past due between sixty and ninety days. Now I I've just got two customers, national customers that um, are amongst 10 states. I'm not the bigger ones of the NSPs, so I can't imagine what they're floating. But um, as far as not paying on time or whatever, likely they don't have the cash flow to make it work. I get it. They shouldn't be doing it, but I get it. But I, I've been in that position. I've I've had to loan the company money to make things work um, because uh, things are past due or things aren't getting paid on time. I've resolved to never let myself get in that position again because I'm I'm focusing on things in shop, in-house. If it's out of state, it's coming out of the shop. In other words, somebody's ordering cores, keys, whatever, we'll ship it out. But I'll never let myself get in that position again. Uh, but I understand why NSPs pay a little bit slower. But at the same time, they shouldn't be. They should have the cash flow. They should have the relationships. Uh, they should have that with their company or the companies they work for where they're paying on time. Uh, again, I get it. Not advisable. I'm getting away from it. I'm never going to get into a position before uh, again where somebody owes me, you know, 67,000, 60, 90 days, whole total over 100,000. I'm, I'm never going to lose sleep like that again. Tim, you had a question? Yeah. I mean, if uh, basically, if you know, you're going to hang us up and say, you know, I'm not going to pay you for this, this, and this, but I will pay you for that. Um, I don't want your business. 
I mean, I'm not the shop owner. I, I don't own where I work for. I'm an employee, but as much uh, as I have learned over the past couple of years, um, you know, I don't want a uh, NSP saying, oh, I'm going to pay you 120 bucks to drive 30 miles away and do this, this, and this. I'm going to tell them straight up front and say, no, this is what I need in order to be able to go there. And then when I do get there, yeah, if you want to send me the parts, that's fine. Um, but if you don't, then don't give me a rush of shit about charging you retail price for it. You know, and Jeff, how many how many times have we seen either on Clearstar, Locksmith Nation, or wherever it may be, people bitching about, oh, they're not paying me or they're past due, and I'm having to call them or saying credit card only, blah blah blah. I mean, it, it's pretty prevalent, no matter who daily, the NSP- weekly, monthly. Yeah. Yeah. So their 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 cash flow is not strong apparently, or at least you know, their customers aren't paying timely. Yeah. Don't know, but it's one of those things either you deal with the you know, you deal with it or you just say, No, I'm not deal I'm not working with them. Yeah. I don't I don't know what it may be, but I just have a strong inclination. Yeah. Fellas, we got any other uh final points before I wrap this up? I'll I'll just say this that one of our uh NSPs that we do work for, um they we bill them on a net 30 basis. However, they bill the their national big box client on a net 45 basis. And they have in the past seen fit to say, hey, we're only going to pay you on a net 45 because that's what we get paid on. And we say no. You you need to pay us on net 30 because that's what our terms are. And uh, it took a few times and a few times of us saying, no, we're not going to do work for you because of that before they realized, hey, we need to pay our bills to you. So, yes, Tyler, to your point, uh, they're floating a, a good amount of cash and uh, some NSPs need to do a little bit better about that. Yeah, and I think the thing, the main thing is, is that locksmiths poo-poo them all the time. But the thing is, is that um, there are companies, individuals, single shops, multiple shops, whatever it may be, enabling them. There are people willing to do the work and to keep them going. So uh, if you've done that and those people are not paying others, uh, you don't have a dog in the fight. You can't be bitching about NSPs because you supported them in the past, whatever it may be now. So just shut the fuck up. (laughs) Right? Exactly. Well, I guess Tim is going to ask us some crazy questions again. Oh, I love this. Y'all can ask us crazy questions at any time if you mail us at the three tumblers pod three spelled out the three tumblers pod at gmail.com or on twitter at three tumblers pod in this case three is just the number it's not spelled out i don't know who who set this up but uh there's no sort of transparency anywho And now for another round of crazy questions. I'm back again with some questions that our listeners, all two of them, are demanding to be answered. Jeff, Tyler, question number one. Would you rather have A, hot sauce on a peanut butter and jelly sandwich or B, grape jelly on your taco? Tyler. Number one, hot sauce. On your peanut butter jelly? Yes. All right, Jeff. Hot sauce on peanut butter and jelly. A yes. Burger, uh, a burger with peanut butter on it is really freaking good. I've never had that before. We agree for but once. I I will go with A as well. Hot sauce on your peanut butter and jelly sandwich. All right, question number two. What is better to have in the field? A faulty part or a faulty customer? Jeff. Well, you can easily replace the part, but not the customer. So, Tyler. I, I can't manifest a part, so I would go with a faulty customer. Yep. I'll, I will go with a uh, farty part or a farty customer as well. All right. Question number three. Would you rather have a cat or be dogs? Tyler. 
I've got a dog, but we're we're gonna get a cat as soon as well. Good forward, as sad as this may be, when our dog passes away, we're, we're gonna get a cat. Well, Jesus Tyler, Christ. I have, I I have cats to bring you. Uh, Jeff, dog or cat? Dog. A dog? Yes. I I would rather prefer birds and turtles, but uh, I I'm stuck with cats. All right, you can ask us these questions. Did you know that? Yeah, you really can. Just send Hefe a message through the emails or the Twitters now for spare parts. Yet again, we find more stuff in our pockets like keys, pins, combinations, and other spare parts. Tim, what do you got? You know, I got the uh, fact that this week has been really busy and I've knocked out a bunch of stuff and it's almost two years since I started as a locksmith and the other day when I was on a job that just took a lot longer than it should have, uh, all I had to text Jason, my boss, was I am into complications and I'm going to be late. That's it. I'm at that level. So, yeah. Awesome. Tyler. Yeah, congratulations, Tim, on your impending anniversary. I will say, we're talking about NSPs. I want to go to FAT for uh, one that's in particular very good. Uh, uh, LockNet. Everybody loves them for a good reason. They're very good. Ian Green specifically. Uh, done work with him in the years, haven't, and many years since then. But uh, LockNet, good group. Uh, if you have a chance, do work for them. Good guys. This episode is not sponsored by LockNet. I really don't have any spare parts because I've been on jury duty all week. So I've just been looking at busted up old doors and knobs from the 70s because the building was built in and has remained in the 70s. Well, you've wasted even more time listening to us yet again. As always, if you have any hate mail or love letters for us, write them on the back of a $20 bill and email it to the 3 tumblerspod at gmail.com or tag us on Twitter at 3 tumblerspod I'm the technical producer of this show, Jeff Moss. Our executive producer is Tyler J. Thomas, and our writer and editor is Toasted Tim Coleman. Our registered mail manager is Kent B. Good. Our staff intern is Lois Rung, and our chief legal counsel is Hugh Lewis Dewey of Dewey, Cheatham, and Howe, otherwise known to visitors of the West Side Market as Huey Louie Dewey. Don't get drunk. Toasted Tim Coleman. Jury duty sucks. This has been a Three Tumblers production, season one. Copyright 2023. All rights reserved. Find this episode and others wherever you get your podcasts. Yep. Mm-hmm. Good point, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs>